The Neighboring Food Co-op Association is, um, is actually a cooperative of co-ops. So in a sense, we are you all. Um, and I serve as executive director uh, following the direction of the vision set out by our co-ops and an elected board of directors. I encourage you to look for the neighboring food co-ops board member buttons on a few people here. If you have any questions about the NFCA, also seek out Bonnie Hudspeth. Um, you know, key to our vision is working together to try to create a more cooperative economy in the region. And key to that vision is creating a community for cooperators to come together. And obviously, we share that vision uh, with CDS, with NCG, with NCB. And uh, again, it's just such a, a great opportunity to work together on this event. Um, so to give you a little bit of background on the NFCA, and there, there are so many people in this room right now who've been part of creating this vision, but I did want to acknowledge one in particular, I hope that's okay to point out Mark Goering, who way back when was chair of the board of Brattleboro Food Co-op when they embarked on a 100-year vision and invited their neighboring food co-ops to be part of that discussion about how we could accomplish so much more if we no longer did our work in isolation. And that was an inspiring enough invitation that our co-ops continue those discussions, continued strategic conversations about what we could do together, how the Northeast would look differently, you know, if we did our work together and tried to use our shared resources for shared impact. Um, and another important part of that was our first commissioning of an impact study in 2008. And so I just wanted to share a little bit of this because this really was a revelation for our co-ops. We'd rarely had the opportunity to look at what we have been accomplishing together. Um, with our shared resources, with our shared purchasing power. Um, and it not only enabled us to really inspire our member co-ops on what we could do together, but enabled us to advocate for our co-ops in an increasingly competitive marketplace, right? Few people would have understood before this study that our Vermont members were among the top 25 employers in the state, right? They would not have recognized how much more we compensate our employees compared to mainstream retailers. And they wouldn't have been aware of the local purchasing power that we had together. And what was particularly exciting about that for us is it really inspired our co-ops to decide, yes, there's something we can do here. How can we formalize this effort? How can we make sure that the space we've created for participation for shared success survives over time? Um, so we formed a cooperative federation with food co-ops as our members and laid out these priorities of peer networking, of shared marketing, of organizational partnerships, and then regional sourcing. And just to share with you, over time, we continue to update these statistics. And um, it continues to be very inspiring for us to find new ways to share the impact our co-ops have in this region. So moving beyond just those base statistics that we've collected in the past, how can we continue to articulate to consumers, policymakers, activists, other people in the food system, what we contribute, what we can contribute moving forward. But what I wanted to leave you with um, is thinking both locally in your own co-op about participation, but what then that participation contributes in terms of our larger scale impact. Um, one of the impacts that you know, I think is a little harder maybe for our members to recognize is that we've created a certificate program in cooperative enterprise at the U University of Massachusetts, right? This is a place where there are almost no other courses on cooperatives. And we've been able to work with the economics department to create an entire certificate for undergraduate students. And when I'm teaching an introduction to the cooperative movement in that department, certainly students are inspired by participation, right? They're intrigued by what it looks like to have a democratic organization, um, how these businesses can compete locally. But I just wanted to share with you what really makes their eyes pop is when they see global statistics. Because they tend to see each of our food co-ops as an isolated entity that does some great work, but it's only really relevant on that local scale. And we know how important participation is in having that impact. But when they see our collective impact and the manner in which we are actually, we actually have more impact than those enterprises out there that we call conventional, right? Co-ops employ more people than multinationals do. 
We have more members than are direct investors in investor-held enterprise. Um, these things are not generally recognized in the mainstream media. And by working together, we've been able to bring them forward and not only think about what is our individual co-ops impact, what is our impact regionally, what's our impact nationally, and then how can we make it clear that the participation that we're encouraging on the local level can have dramatic impacts on the global level and use that as inspiration for our, our work moving forward. So that's really what I wanted to share with you is as you're processing today, thinking about participation, what we can do more, what we can do better, also keep that big picture impact in your mind and think about what we can accomplish moving forward. And thank you again, uh, Marilyn and CDS Consulting for this opportunity and uh, have a great day. <laughs>